Hello and good morning. Welcome to Friday again. I'm sure the weeks are going faster. It might just be me, it might be my age, I don't know, but I'm sure the week's going faster. Uh, please do pop in the comments a hello to let me know that you're there so I can wave at you and so that I know that I'm not talking to myself, which I do quite a lot. Um, but it is nice to know that sometimes someone's there. <laughs> Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Karen. Oh, grey and dismal in Manchester. Oh, we have got sunshine here today. Um, hi, Maria, lovely. Uh, yes, I'm looking out now into the garden and the sun is shining, beautifully shining. Uh, but yes, back to Friday again. It is surreal, isn't it? Good morning, Sheila. Uh, and hello, dedicated Druid. Good morning. Um, yeah, Friday. I, do, it's, I can't even believe it's the middle of July. It, it's just bizarre. But there you go. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sue says good morning to Pete and Eric. Yeah, Eric's just run out into the garden. Um, but Pete is here next to me working hard. For anyone that doesn't know, my husband's been working from home for the last four months now and sits on the desk right next to me. A dining room has been converted into an office, basically. Um, hello, Kate. Yeah, I know. Where did the week go? It was like you blinked, wasn't it? Good morning, Eve. Uh, Maria says good morning, Pete, too. Um, <laughs> the morning and we're from Eric is that's typed in the comments is my husband. <laughs> I think you know, Eric's actually become more popular than any of us, really. But he's disappeared into the garden because oh he's sunning himself he is sitting on the uh, steps from the conservatory baking himself in the sunshine so thank you so much everyone for joining me again um i'm still here <laughs> still doing my thing i thought today uh because i've been asked quite a few questions about it lately i thought i'd cover protection today magical protection not the other sort. <laughs> That's totally up to you. <laughs> um, and so I thought I'd cover protection today. Um, <laughs> you've managed to wake up on time. Sometimes it is a struggle in the mornings, isn't it? I know where you're coming from. So I'm going to be dealing with protection today. I just happen to have an oracle card that's for protection. Delphinium is the protection one. And there is an amazing woman there with a, a huge sword. I will liken her to a moistened bint. Um, what do you think if you're not if you don't do Bonty Python you won't get that at all um, she's got a very impressive sword there she looks a bit miserable actually I'm guessing perhaps the sword's a bit heavy I don't know <laughs> but this is all about protection good morning Vicky so let's have a look and see what the card means so Delphinium for protection shields up and swords at the ready many times in our lives we come under attack mentally emotionally and sometimes even physically now is such a time exercise your absolute right to protect yourself and those that you love and care about do what you feel is necessary to shield yourself against negativity take your sword and cut the ties with those that drain you emotionally or ab abuse you verbally you don't need that kind of energy attacking you on a regular basis beware the psychic vampires we will talk about those in a moment Mostly they aren't even aware that they are draining the energy of others. It is with these types that you need to protect yourself fully. They can be exhausting to deal with. Surround your house with protection on the spiritual and magical level. Keep your personal psychic shields up and metaphorical swords drawn when outside or dealing with others at this time. So Delphinium, apart from being beautiful flowers, are very magical. Place the flowers on graves or in vases to remind you of those that have passed over. Delphiniums also bring encouragement and positive energy. They can help people broaden their outlook and take brave new steps, especially when made into a blue plant for dyeing cloth, covers, bags and the like. But take great care in the process as the root and seeds are poisonous. Be careful. Uh, the bit of mythology about Delphinium. Greek mythology depicts the Delphinium blossoming from the blood of the god Ajax. Sounds like a floor cleaner, I know, but there you go. When he was killed, it is said that as his blood hit the earth, these striking flowers blossomed. Also known as larkspur, 
it gained its, this common name from the Tudors who thought it looked like the feet of a lark. I suppose it does really, it's got quite an unusual shape to it. So we're all about protection today. Um, good morning, good, oh dear, good morning Irene. Sue, my goodness, you hit the nail on the head with this one. Uh, I, you know, I, I've had so many questions about it in the last couple of weeks. Uh, there is uh, a post on my Papers Pagan blog giving all the herbs and foods that you can use uh, for protection magic. That's already up there. Um, but I'm going to cover working with it, personal shields and also doing a bit of protection magic today. As always, if you have any questions, please do ask them. Uh, pop them in the comments and I will do my very best to answer them about protection or magic or witchcraft in general or me or Eric or anything you want to ask a question about. Pop it in the comments and uh, we'll take it from there. So I think we need to start really with psychic shields. I mentioned psychic vampires. I honestly think that a lot of people that are psychic vampires don't even know they're doing it. And a psychic vampire is, you've all met them. Um, you might be out somewhere, you might really be with a group of friends, you might be talking to complete strangers, but when you come away from it, you feel absolutely drained and all you've done is have a conversation. It's quite often people that spend their entire time moaning about stuff and we all know them, uh, it happens. But it may just be someone that's dealing with a lot of stuff at the moment that doesn't realise that their energy is affecting other people and that's basically what it is you're picking up on on all their negative vibes uh, and it is draining it's absolutely draining good morning leslie um so yeah we need to protect against that and i say most people don't even know they're doing it so you need a psychic or a a mental shield good morning kelly to keep you protected from it and it is super super easy um it's all about visualization uh, for any Star Trek geeks like me, um, I like to, as soon as I put my shields up, I have Riker, William Riker, in my head going, shields up, red alert, and whoosh, the shields come in. But if you don't watch Star Trek, Star Trek that's not going to mean anything to you. Basically, the protective bubble is the best one that most people seem to visualise, and it is really, really easy. You have to visualise a bubble. So, oh, good morning, Eric. You have to visualise a bubble surrounding you, covering you completely, but flexible so that you can still move. And that bubble can be any colour you want. It can be any image that you want, but it deflects the negative energy. You can create it with mirrors if you want to reflect negative energy you can create it to be like a brick wall if you want to but i wouldn't recommend that for long periods of time it's really really brilliant if you're like me and don't like it when it's too peopley if you're out in the shopping center or in a big crowd or somewhere where there's lots of people and you don't want to pick up on all the energies of everybody it's like having the entire crowd screaming in your head if you want to block that out then bringing up uh, a visualised shield, protective shield, is brilliant. That's what you need to do. So you can visualise it as a bubble. It needs to be flexible because you've still got to be able to move. You can also use a cloak. So pulling a virtual cloak around you and pulling the head up, uh, pulling the hood up. Really, it's how you want to work with it. Uh, but as I say, it is really easy. There's a little um, exercise you can do. Take a few moments to just ground and centre yourself, but then visualise a giant bubble starting to form around you. It can come from the earth, it can come from the air, it can come from the sky, it can just pop into existence. As you get more uh, experienced with it, you will just be able to switch it on and off. Let the flexible sphere form around you, you know, a few inches from you, about six inches from you, but so that you can move. The bubble might be clear, it might be coloured. You can fill it with coloured energy if you want to. Uh, that can actually change your mood if you fill it with positive uh, colours. The bubble's there to keep out the harmful energy, but lets the positive through. Um, and then when you no longer need it, just see it disintegrate, just see it melt it back down into the ground. Um, the cloak's the same. You could just visualise yourself pulling it on. Um, if you have got into a really tight space, you can put up a wall 
or you can put up a mirror as I say but don't keep it up there for a long time because you want the good stuff to come in as well and a brick wall around you the whole time will stop the good stuff from coming in as well. Uh, good morning Claire, uh, Trekkie, yeah. want to know is a good crystal for truth? Want to know, yes, uh, right let's have a look, quick answer Maria's question while we're here, let's have a look in da -da -da, crystal magic. So let's have a look at truth, fingers crossed it's actually, in. right okay well, there's several Maria, so agate is a good one, blue lace agate in particular, I think blue lace agate in particular is good for truth because it's a communicate, I'm holding it to my throat chakra, it's a good communication crystal so blue lace agate would probably be my go-to for truth, but green aventurine, bloodstone, carnelian, chrysophrase, garnet, howlite, jade, kyanite lapis lazulite that again because it's blue and associates with the communication with the throat chakra moonstone black obsidian sodalite and sugalite so yeah i would say my go-to would be blue lace agate for truth maria but there's quite a few of them there um i'll post them in the comments afterwards as well uh trekkie yeah we love a bit of star trek maria <laughs> uh, leslie says hello eric good boy <laughs> Uh, morning Susie, uh, Irene, when I'm out, especially Oxford Street, and putting on a, not bubble but a wall, yeah, Oxford Street, busy, Whew, no, I don't blame you there at all, Irene, oh, and there it's off. <laughs> so that's your psychic shield, it is practice with your visualisation skills, practice bringing it up and putting it down, work with different ways that work for you, I'm going to show you how to do it with a crystal in a, sec in a second as well. Sue is making a list of books I'd like for your birthdays. <laughs> so fire up to October 2025. Yeah, I keep writing them too, so, Sue. I'm sorry. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> um, there's lots of herbs and plants, there's lots of foods for protection um, up on my Pathos Pagan blog if you want to have a look. Um, there's also good days of the week for working protection spells. That would be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Not a Friday, but we're going to work one today anyway. A uh, good planet for protection spells is the sun. It's full of courage, it's full of energy, it's full of strength. So it works brilliantly for protection spells. Zodiac sign for protection spells, Aries. So if the moon's in Aries. Uh, Maria, thank you. Pulled the card for truth and misplaced your book as I moved them around in the box to look. <laughs> uh, moon phases for protection spells, waning moon and the dark moon. Um, good moon faces to work them on and colours black dark purple no black dark blue purple and white um, but you know as always as with all these things work with your own intuition but see I do work I don't work from script but I do have to write notes because otherwise my head explodes um, fresh herbs and flowers can be put in a vase near to your front door to bring protection into your home um, herbs and flowers that you f feel are protective, but go with your intuition. Spices, herbs and flowers uh, can be added to magical spells, witch bottles, spell pouches, sprinkled onto candles made into sachet powders and then placed around the home. Uh, dried herbs and flowers can be tied in bunches and hung over doorways and window frames. I've actually got a bunch of dried herbs hung over the doorway of my front door for protection. Um, you can make incense to smudge your house obviously and cleanse and bring in protection in the form of smoke and you can eat foods to bring in protection. Um, one of my favourites is rhubarb pie. Rhubarb is very protective so I'm all for eating rhubarb pie or rhubarb crumble just purely for magic obviously um, but some can some other herbs and things foods like vinegar and oil they're all really good for protection you can also sprinkle them around the boundaries of your house as well and good old salt salt is absolutely brilliant for sprinkling around the boundaries of your house to bring in protection um, so i'm going to work a different bubble with you uh, this is a white light bubble and it can be used for you but it can also be used to protect a bubble of protection around someone else um, i'm glad the children had to actually disappeared because i <laughs> when they went to school um, I used to say every morning as they went out the front door I would visualize a bubble of protection around each one of them um, just to keep them safe throughout the day and with my husband sitting next to me he probably doesn't know this either every time he goes out to a gig because gigs in a band I put a bubble of protection as he goes out the door 
sometimes if something's worrying me particularly i will also visualize a bubble of protection around the van or the car so you can direct it at other people <laughs> leslie says hello as well she doesn't want to leave you out <laughs> Um, so you can work protection for yourself, but you can also work the bubble of protection for other people. Uh, this one involves, uh, you can burn incense or oil if you want to, and I'm taking it from another book, it's ridiculously blades, you know, books. <laughs> this, to, the spells today come from the Spells and Charms book, so they're all in there if you've got those. So I'm going to work with the white light protection. Um, you can light incense or oil burner if you want to, uh, a scent that you associate with protection. Bay, rosemary, uh, dragon's blood is one of my favourite. Um, a good quick visualisation for protecting your house is to visualise a whacking great big dragon sitting on your roof. Perfect. No one's going to come near your house with a dragon sitting on the roof. Um, so I like to wear with dragon's blood because I think that's really protective. But this one, we need a white candle. Uh, I've got a huge, great big white candle here, but I think it's a little bit too big. So let's work with this little one. So just get a little white candle, make sure that it works there. Oh, and I've got a new toy. You're going to be really excited about this. Perhaps I just haven't been out enough, really. <laughs> I have a new lighter for lighting candles. It's got a bendy thing, but it's electric. So you charge it with the USB from your computer. So when it runs out, you recharge it. So there's no throwing it away. There's no refilling it. You just recharge it. It's a taser. And it's a, it's a taser. You're impressed with this, aren't you? It's a taser. Look, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. When you press the button, there's a little jolt of electricity runs between the two. So I could taser people with it as well. So more about protection. <laughs> Shouldn't be advising people to get tasers, should I? But let's light the candle and hope that it lights because the wick is very, very low on this one. Go on, light for me. There you go. Cool. The wick on this particular candle is almost non existent. So let's give it a minute to come on, light. It's also an old candle. These are the perils of doing a live. Is your candle not lighting? It's like standing in a field or a ritual trying to light a candle. Right, obviously we don't want to work with the little one. Let's go with the big one. It's light. <laughs> and now it's a light. Oh, you're messing with me today. <laughs> so there we have your lit white candle. Um, I got it well there are everyone's asking where it came from it came from amazon good old amazon um maria smog is my bewitched botanical cream brilliant yeah if anybody wants soap or body butters uh, or even wax melts bewitched botanicals are my go-to they smell amazing and they're made by the most fantastic couple they're very very lovely people but they do a body botanical body cream called smog smog which of course is a dragon so yes you'd be bringing in protection with your body butter i like your idea maria brilliant um but yes the lighter came from amazon so um it's a bit more eco-friendly than my old ones so when you eventually get your candle lit and the dog stops singing ground yourself center i'm not in that place right now totally hyper so <laughs> when did you doing this yourself Take a couple of deep breaths to, to ground yourself. Um, then you need to sit quietly, light incense if you want to. Sit and just breathe in the fragrance of the incense or the oil if that's what you've got, or just enjoy the silence for a moment. Light the candle and when it finally lights, call on the divine, deity, spirits, whatever you work with to lend their protection. Just a few words up to connect. Then you need to watch the candle and you need to watch the light from the candle and you need to visualize it growing stronger and stronger and bigger until it wraps itself completely around you. So you're drawing on the energy from the candle flame, you're drawing on the energy of the light from the candle frame 
and allowing it to grow around you as a protective bubble. This works really well if you are doing it for someone else and you've got a photograph of the person. So you could put the photograph of the person in front of the candle and then see the energy of the candle surround the photograph with a bubble of protection. So that works particularly well for it. But you can do this just to surround yourself and you can say something, uh, white light protect me and keep me safe, you know doesn't have to be anything more complicated than that. So that's working with the energy of the candle and bringing it out to shield you. And when you put yourself in your bubble, don't forget to seal it at the top and seal it underneath. Irene, do you have a spell for stop eating snacks? <laughs> I need protection already. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> Irene, I love my food. You can tell from my waistline that I love my food. Um, <laughs> It's not something I've ever looked at, but that would be willpower. So you might want to look at a spell for willpower. I don't have willpower at all. It's completely non-existent. Some spells are, just aren't strong enough. <laughs> so that's working with the energy of a candle for protection. I think it works very well for yourself, but I think it's ideal if you're protecting someone else because you can put their photograph in front of it and see the energy of the candles around them. Uh, so that's that one doesn't want to go out now uh, protection charms are really good to make and you can make these with anything a small crystal uh, a shell a pebble something that's small that you can just pop in your pocket or your handbag or your purse um sue's forgotten what her waist looks like sue men love curvy women women love curvy women yeah gotta rock the curves that's i'm totally embracing the curves um, but I've got a hagstone here because I just, a local beach has lots of hagstones. So it's just a pebble, nothing expensive, just a pebble that you pick up. And this can be used as a protection charm. Uh, you can pick a small crystal as well if you prefer. Um, so, you know, something like a little piece of, tiny piece of pyrite that I'm going to use in a minute um, that you can just carry with you. Um, it could be anything. It could be a bead or a feather or something that you just carry with you that you know is your protection. You can also do it with a piece of jewellery. So if you've got a pendant that you wear, I wear my pixie made pendant all the time. So you could work it with your pendant or a bracelet or a ring, just a sort of um, item that you've got with you that will carry the protective energy. If you can sit outside, do so. If you're indoors, not a problem. Uh, pop the stone, the crystal, whatever it is in front of you. Um, if you're able to sit out with the sunshine or the moonlight, even better, because the energy from the sun or the moon will charge it. You could do it in front of a candle flame. That would work just as well. Um, sit quietly and just sort of ground. And Maria loves my pendant. Thank you. Yeah, Pixie made. It's got Larimar in it and my little wild boar on the top. They are beautiful beautiful jewellery pieces. Um, so sit and ground yourself, just centre, just allow yourself to breathe. Then you want to allow the end to connect with the item. So I'm connect connecting with the pebble. Each time you breathe in, take the positive energy from the item. Uh, each time you breathe out, allow the negative energy to escape. Uh, then you need to expand the energy from the crystal or the pebble to surround you with the positive light. So you're forming a, a bubble again, but you're using the energy of the pebble or the crystal or the shell or whatever it is that you're using or your pendant. You're allowing that energy to surround you and form a bubble like we did with the candle. The beauty of this is that you can carry it with you. So, because carrying a lit candle with you, not easy. <laughs> so you can carry this item with you. So if you need that energy or need to put your shield up in a hurry, you can just tap it. Or if it's a pendant, you can just tap it. And that's a key for your bubble to create itself. Um, so yeah, use the energy of the pebble, use the energy of the stone, use the energy of the crystal. And again, just allow that bubble to form around you. Allow it to be flexible. Um, move about when you first work with the shield and see how it feels, see how it works for you. Um, and then when you're ready to drop it, just a few breaths and allow the energy to dissipate back into the item. Just allow the energy to back into it. Uh, and then it's there. It's there to activate any time you want. And I say it can be a pebble or a shell or something, a button. It doesn't have to be anything 
specific to something that you can use and carry with you. So that's an easy peasy one to do. When both my, both my youngest is still at school, but when they were both younger and they were at school, I made them protection bags for the kids to take to school with them. They just carried them in their blazer pockets. Uh, my daughter, I still have my daughter's one. Um, I'm just watching Eric's follow the fly. It is a fly, not a bee, isn't it? Sky raisins are all right, but you don't want the spicy ones. Um, Marie, you can buy these little cages that you carry the crystal around your mat. Yes, you can get little cage pendants and you pop different crystals in them. Um, that would work brilliantly. But it doesn't have to be any expensive. Just a pebble is absolutely fine. But yes, when my children were younger, they had little protection pouches that they carried to school with them just in a blazer pocket, but I sat with them and I made them with them. So they were involved in making uh, the pouches. So I think it had extra protective energy because they were involved in doing it. You need a little pouch. I mean, these things, little organza bags are brilliant, but you could use a little paper envelope. Or so it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be, you can make a little parcel and seal it all up for them. Uh, but little bags, brilliant. If you're working with younger children, get them to choose the colour. I've gone black because to me that's a protective colour. But if you're working with children, get them to choose the colour of the bag. Uh, and then it'll have more association with protection for them. Um, so you, you need your little bag. <laughs> Dogs are running up and down. Then you need, this one's quite interesting. You can make these for adults as well. It's not just limited to children. You can make them for adults as well. But for children, it works quite well. If I've got a little penny here, if you can find one with the that was minted on the year that your child was born, it brings a, uh, a kind of personal connection in. So this one has got 2005. So that's the year my uh, her son was born, her youngest. So that penny is going to go in there. So you can say something or you can just visualise the link. Um, a penny from 2005, birth date, year of my son and then pop it in there if you've got some of the little beads with letters on you could put a bead in with their initial on if you've got a load of beads get the child to pick one that they associate with themselves so it might be their favorite color it might be i've got a fantastic bead here that is a little skull so i always associate skulls well i actually associate skulls with both my children my daughter loves all of the goth stuff but my son wants to be a paleoanthropologist so there's the skull connection so I'm going to put that in the bag because that connects him to the bag but I say something with an initial on you could even use a little pebble and paint their initials on it as well but pop that in there that makes the association with the child again if you've got one of their baby teeth um, Perhaps not young children that are still working with the tooth fairy because they might want to know how you manage to get a tooth back from your child. <laughs> but you could put that in because that's very personal. Or you could just put a strand of their hair in as well. Um, again, bringing in the personal connection. If you're working with an adult, do the same. Not an adult tooth, obviously, but you could put a piece of hair in as well. Um, Protective herbs and spices as well, and crystals. So I've got a little tiny piece of pyrite. Pyrite's really good for protection. So I'm gonna pop that in there as well to bring protection to my child. And then you pop it in there. Charge all these items individually or do it when you're finished, it's up to you. I've got some herbs to add as well. Bear in mind that these little organza bags, if you've got very finely ground herbs, it all falls out. <laughs> so I'm going to do it for the purpose of today, but just remember that you know some of it falls out. So garlic, garlic, that? garlic, really, really protective. Although I'm not sure my son would want it in his, particularly because I'm pretty sure he's part vampire. Doesn't like the sunlight. <laughs> I'm using garlic, the white papery outside of the garlic. I like to eat the garlic cloves, so I don't want to waste. The paper outside bits because it carries the magic of garlic so i'm going to put the garlic in there to bring protection use whatever you've got use what you feel drawn to it doesn't have to be anything specific these are what i'm going for 
I've got a bay leaf grown in my garden. Bay is really good for protection as well. So that's going to pop in there to bring protection. Hello, Sylvia. So that's bay. I've got some peppercorns. You can work with black peppercorns. They're brilliant. These ones just happen to be red. So we'll put a few peppercorns in to bring strength, courage and protection. I have some dragon's blood here. Dragons to me are just strength and courage and protection of all sorts. So it works brilliantly. Um, I don't want a ground bit though. I want a lump so that it doesn't fall through the holes. So there we go. It is resin. Dragon's blood is resin from a, a tree. Drac draconian or something like that, I think. We'll pop that in there, dragon's blood. Uh, that's looking pretty nice. I have got some wormwood and I have got some agrimony in here, but it's quite finely ground. So I'm not going to put it in there because it'll fall out. So once you've got your protection bag, charge it. Hold it in your hands or get your child to hold it with you, with their hands as well. And draw energy from the ground, draw it from the earth, draw it from the sky, draw it from the air around you. And channel that energy into the bag. To bring protection and you can get your child to make up a little chant or a little poem if they want to get them to speak words from their heart children love doing stuff like this uh, and it will be far more personal to them if they've had a hand in making it and then you've got a little pouch obviously be careful with what you put in there if the child is very small don't let them keep it themselves we don't want them choking on dragon blood resin and pennies <laughs> be sensible um, but the older children could just pop it in their school bag or in their pocket uh, and if they feel threatened at any time they can just hold the bag and they'll feel the powers of protection but again works for adults too but it doesn't have to be limited to children you can make your own protection bag as well do you, do you want a protection bag too because you're not very brave are you let's face it <laughs> You're scared of carrier bags for a start, aren't you? And dustbins. Yeah. We'll make you a protection bag. <laughs> so that's the protection spell pouch. Um, you can renew it when you want to. My son, who will be totally embarrassed at this because he's now 14 and six foot, but you know, he has one hanging on the end of his bed for nightmares. What we made together. I made it a long time ago, but it's still hanging on his bed. So you can make the protection pouches for things like nightmares. If that's if your child suffers from bad dreams, you can work together with them. Um, he has a, he used to have a little pot as well, just a little pot, um, and put all of those type of contents inside it. We made it together. He picked the stuff that he wanted to protect him while he sleeps, to protect him from nightmares. So those work really, really well for children, particularly if they get involved. Uh, let them pick the things that they associate that they think will help. Um, hello, Deirdre. Thank you. Yeah, no, the spells from uh, Spells and Charms, but I will pop it up on, on the Pathos blog. Uh, no problem. I'm now covered in bits of herbs and things. There are lots of uh, crystals you can work with for protection. You could just carry one with you. You could pop them with your spells. Um, there's a whole list of them. I'm not going to go through them all. I must admit, I do find black crystals. For me, I associate more with being protective. Uh, but there's all sorts. Uh, amber, bloodstone, uh, carnelian, citrine, fluorite, uh, rhodonite, selenite, tiger's eye. Tiger's eye is a good one. Tiger is strength, isn't it, and courage, so that works very well. If you're looking at psychic protection with crystals, there are, are some that are a bit more specific. Amethyst, carnelian, fluorite, lapis lazulite, selenite and serpentine are all good for bringing about psychic protection. Um, good morning, Emma. Yeah, Eric, he's, oh, he's sleeping now. <laughs> I'm sorry, are we boring you? <laughs> Um, so that's the protection spells. Really, really simple. Um, I say they work for um, children and adults, but children do love to get involved and particularly at school, which can be quite trying for some children. If they know they've got a bit of magic in their pocket to keep them protected, uh, it's, it's all good, really. Hello, Sylvia. Uh, Maria, yeah, he is a monkey. He's a total git, actually. But, you know, there you go. <laughs> 
Eve, black tourmaline. Yeah, I've got a black tourmaline pendant, which always, always makes me feel quite protected. Uh, if I'm out in somewhere or going somewhere that I know where I'm going to be a bit bombarded, I quite often wear the black tourmaline pendant. Uh, Sylvia, I have your kitchen, which is World of Magical Plants and Herbs. Da, 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 just happened to have it here. Look at that. Let's see, I don't remember stuff, so I use it as a reference book. That's why all the post-it notes are in there. <laughs> So you have to trust your intuition, but sometimes it's interesting to look things up. Um, thank you. Going to all the spell book today. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's my it's how I work magic, but just focused on spells and charms. That one is part of a series. So um, yeah, it's easy. It is easy to bring in about protection, and we do we all need it at some point. Um, but you can work, as say, with something as simple as a pebble. It doesn't even it doesn't have to be a hagstone. It can just be a simple pebble or a shell. Uh, pebbles carry the energy of Earth, which brings stability. Uh, if it's a pebble like this one from the sea, then it also carries the energy of water with it as well. So it's good for balancing and protecting your emotions. Shells, obviously, uh, pretty much the same. Uh, they they've got the energy of the sun as well with them because the sun's baked to them so pretty good all-rounders for free really 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 easy to work with Irene is still missing two books and the flower cards <laughs> thank you Irene you guys are absolute stars you really are um, so yeah protection magic easy to work with very straightforward doesn't need to be fancy doesn't need to cost lots of money as always, trust your intuition with it as well. Um, but we could all do, we all need protection at some point. Um, so is there, are there any other questions? Um, I'll go through, we've got, I actually wrote a list of the events coming up today at my husband's suggestion, because I always forget the dates. So we've got a Waffling Witches uh, within this Kitchen Witch group, within the Kitchen Witch group, sorry, within the Kitchen Witch Facebook group, Sunday 26th of July, 10 a.m., Waffling Witches, myself and the Hearth Guardians, and we're going to be focusing on talking about Book of Shadows. We also have, thank you, my husband's put the link up to the event. We've also got a Lunasar ritual. It's an open ritual written by the lovely Sue, one of our Hearth Guardians, but all of us Kitchen Witch Posse will be working the ritual live. Sunday the 2nd of August and that's 4 p.m. That's again over in the Kitchen Witch Facebook group. Um, Moonbooks live sessions. My publisher Moonbooks have just started running live Facebook sessions, live talks. I was lucky enough to be the first one to kick it off last week uh, and it was Chris Allen this week. More to come throughout the whole of July, August and September. There'll be a different author talking every Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. UK time on the Moonbooks Facebook page. Such an array of talented authors and all kinds of subjects. So do check in with those. And my next book out, Curative Magic, which is published by Llewellyn, I'm going to be doing a live book reveal, a live chat, and I'm going to be working with some of the magic from the Curative Magic book and doing a book giveaway live 4pm Sunday 23rd of August. So if you've missed all those, they are all up on my website in the events list, but if you're in the Kitchen Witch Facebook group uh, or on this page, we will be posting them all and my husband has very kindly posted all the links in the comments so lots coming up if you want me to talk about anything particular on my friday sessions just message me or comment and i will do my very best to cover it uh, sue i think you are star keeping us going through this madness sue it's keeping me going through the madness i have you guys to thank <laughs> all you lot i keep this friday morning keeps me sane it, it seriously does um so yes, another ritual. We're going to be doing live uh, Sabbath rituals for the foreseeable future. So do, because because people have asked for them and we do like to keep people happy if we can. <laughs> uh, Leslie, I have a family member who drains the life from me every time I'm in their company. They're so negative. Yeah, I've, there are people like that. And I really honestly don't think they know that they're doing it. So the, the shield absolutely essential when you're in that situation you will notice a real difference um they don't know they're doing it um so yeah uh, bring your shields up and you'll be safe 
uh, Sue has a friend like that. Yeah, I think sometimes you come to the point where you do have to cut the ties if someone is is making your life a misery because they've made their life a misery. Sometimes you've got to draw the line. Um, self care, self care is paramount. Leslie, my bookshelf is full of your books. You love them. Oh, thank you, Leslie. Thank you so much. <laughs> Eva accidentally bought three more the other day. Eva, you carry on having those kinds of accidents. <laughs> They're brilliant, those accidents. But protection for anything else, you know, obviously. <laughs> you guys are absolute stars. Christine, good morning. Um, it just wouldn't be good if we didn't have Friday chats. Oh, bless you, Christine. Um, it is. It's lovely to connect with you guys. I think there are so many things good positive things that have come out of this bizarre world situation that we're in at the moment and I think being able to connect online live has been one of the absolute positives that's come out of it all. Uh, I was very hesitant about doing it at first but yeah I love my Friday mornings and chatting with you guys and the Waffling Witches chats are such a laugh. We go off on all sorts <laughs> of bizarre tangents it's just unreal the subjects that we cover but oh uh, you've got to laugh haven't you you've got to get and of course in the talks that i do live which i've missed i've missed going to the events and festivals and i had such a full diary this year it's now full for next year <laughs> thank you um but it's uh, we can connect with so many more people with the lives you connect with people across the entire globe so that's been a real big positive to come out of this um, but it's been fast, fantastic to chat with you guys. And all the time you want me to do it, I will carry on doing it. Eva's going to blame me on the wine. can blame anything on the wine, Eva. <laughs> Eve, thank you. Love the chats and rituals. Yeah, we will be having open rituals again next year. We haven't been able to do it this year, obviously. But they're always fun too. Um, so any more questions about witchcraft or protection? I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, any suggestions for particular subjects you would like me to cover in the future? Just shout and I will do them. Um, lots of other lives coming up in various places. So it'd be fab to see all you guys. Um, Maria, looking forward to next year. Yeah, next year's going to be packed. My diary for next year is absolutely packed. Um, Sylvia just bought the spells and charms and the crystal magic paper. Sylvia, thank you bless you that's very kind of you i hope you find them useful um the books that i write are written as i'm talking to you uh it's not shakespeare but hopefully it's helpful um but that's protection really you can you know you can bring it about leslie i don't want to sleep in case i miss our chat uh, leslie perhaps we can send you an alarm <laughs> perhaps we'll do an alarm every friday morning <laughs> But of course, you can catch videos on the replay as well. Um, Kelly's made lots of notes. Uh, Kelly, I will be posting it on my Pathos blog as well. The, the list of herbs and foods for protection is already up on my Pathos Beneath the Moon blog. Um, but go with your intuition. Always trust your intuition. It will never let you down. And what you have to hand. Kitchen witches use what they have, they have to hand. They don't buy expensive things um, and fancy ingredients. So you've got to trust your intuition and work what you've got in your cupboards. Um, you'd be surprised, well, salt. Salt's got to be the cheapest and most original protective, protective ingredient. You can sprinkle it around your home on the outside of your boundary. You can sprinkle it in the corners of the rooms. You can sprinkle it on the windowsills and the door frames. If you don't want little piles of salt around, because that's a little bit dangerous if you've got animals in the house, you could just do salt water and just do a flix, few flicks of salt water around the house. It all brings in protection and it's cheap and easy. Um, <laughs> Eve needs an alarm as well. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, Andrea, uh, that's come up in the comments here, has recorded a couple of my meditations, um, which are over on her YouTube channel. I've shared the link in the Kitchen Witch group, so do go and have a look. Uh, Karen, you're very welcome. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, Les Leslie needs an alarm. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> Eva, that's how I found out about the Kitchen Witch School. Bought the Pagan Portals Kitchen Witch book on impulse. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, the school, we've got some fantastic students at the school. And funny enough, the Pagan Portals Kitchen Witchcraft, which is the first book I ever wrote, has been translated into French. So 
um, that's quite exciting. Uh, and the moon magic has as well. Pagan portals moon magic has been translated into French as well. Um, I can't make sense of most of it because my French is pretty rough. <laughs> I can order pretty things in shops and I can order food from a menu, but that's about it. Uh, Sue, you could use salt water and spray bottle. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be brilliant. So easy to do. Um, I think when you're protecting your home, remember the entrances and the exits, the windows, window frames and the door frames. They are key points to um, bring in protection, just a little bit of sprinkling of salt water or salt. Uh, and if you want to walk round the outside of your house, it's a bit difficult for me to do because I'm in a terrace. <laughs> I could always knock on next door and just ask if I could walk round there <laughs> through their house. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just sprinkling salt through your house. <laughs> but if you can walk round your house, you can use hot foot powder as well, which is really good. The simplest form of hot foot powder is black pepper and salt. Uh, you can add paprika, you can add chilies to it. But that fiery, peppery blend with salt as well, just mix it all up, grind it all up and sprinkle it around your boundary and that will bring in protection as well. Um, so yeah, straightforward to do, easy to do and bring in protection for yourself, your home and those people that you love. All straightforward stuff. Um, thank you, Maria. Um, yes, the curative magic book actually that's not out yet, that's being translated into Polish as well, which is exciting. It's, it's just mad really, but there you go. So uh, thank you all again. I've been waffling for three quarters of an hour now. So, um, you know, I'll let you go about your day. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you again, as always, for your continued support. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Keep an eye out for the live events coming up. Lots and lots happening. Uh, and as I say, if you want me to cover anything particular in the Friday morning chats, do post thought. Um, Maria bought sulfur, but for now it's in the garden box. <laughs> um, yeah, for now, you know, let me know. For now, I will just keep waffling about stuff that pops into my head unless you ask me for something specific. Um, it helps if you ask for something specific. Let's be honest, because my brain gets a bit frazzled. Thank you all so much. You guys are absolute stars. And whatever you're doing today, stay safe. Bring in your protection. Uh, Eric sends woofs as well. Um, you guys are fab. Thank you all so much and have a fantastic weekend and I will see you next week.